pray together. You can stand where you are and you can join us in prayer. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you, my God, that we can come, Father, into your presence with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, my God. Father, we come this afternoon, my God, to lift you up, to worship you, my God, and to glorify you. You said if we lift you up, my God, you will draw all men unto you. And Father, we come this afternoon, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, for our nation today. We pray, Heavenly Father, that our nation, Heavenly Father, would bow its knee to the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We said, Heavenly Father, that in the beginning, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. And Heavenly Father, you said, let there be light. Heavenly Father, we declare light over this nation. Father, we declare that, Heavenly Father, the darkness must flee. Heavenly Father, as the light repels the darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. In Isaiah 1 verse 26, you said, Heavenly Father, you will restore the judges of, of the first. And you will restore the counselors of the beginning, my God. And then we will be called a righteous city. And then, Father, we will be called, Heavenly Father, a, fit, a faithful city. And, Father, I pray today that, Heavenly Father, you will restore, Heavenly Father, the years that the, that the locusts and the canker worm and the caterpillar has eaten, my God. And you will restore unto us, Heavenly Father, the joy of our salvation. Father, we thank you that righteousness exalts the nation. And, Father, we pray that, Heavenly Father, today, Heavenly Father, righteousness, Heavenly Father, will be exalted in this place, my God. That, Heavenly Father, we thank you. That, Heavenly Father, even as Abram prayed, Heavenly Father, if there be five righteous, Heavenly Father, in this uh, place today, they are righteous people, my God. Father, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And Father, for our nation today, we declare righteousness, my God. We declare holiness, my God. Father, we declare, Heavenly Father, the, the statutes, the will of our God for South Africa. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you today that we can call upon you. You said, Lord, if we humble ourselves, if we call upon you and we humble ourselves and pray, then we will hear from heaven. Father, we pray today that you will hear from heaven, Heavenly Father, and that you will heal our land in the name of Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this election, Heavenly Father, would be a turning point for this uh, nation, my God, in the name of Jesus. The 372 years, Heavenly Father, of bondage. Heavenly Father, 372 years, Heavenly Father, of toil. The 372 years, Heavenly Father, of captivity. Father, we break it today and we declare, Heavenly Father, that as a nation, we are free in the name of Jesus. We are free, Heavenly Father, from the Dutch East India Company. We are free, Heavenly Father, from the British occupation. We are free from the apartheid 
government, my God. We are free, Heavenly Father, from the ANC rule in the name of Jesus. We are free from corruption, my God. We are free, Heavenly Father, from, from every Father captivity today in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare, Heavenly Father, that your kingdom is of righteousness. Your kingdom is of peace. Your kingdom, Heavenly Father, is of joy in the Holy Spirit. We declare, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we give you the glory, as we give you the honor, as we give you the praise, my God. That is due unto your name. Father, as your people, we worship you. We adore you, my God. Father, we lift you up. Heavenly Father, there is none like you. Heavenly Father, no one can compare to you. The creator of heaven and earth. The creator of all things, my God. Heavenly Father, you are the Father of all spirits. And today we come to worship you in the beauty of holiness. We come to, we come to worship you, my God, in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we pray today that you would inhabit the praises of your people. Heavenly Father, that you would make us our present in this place. In the name of Jesus, we declare a new order. Heavenly Father, a new order. Heavenly Father, over this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we worship you, my God, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just keep worshiping. Let's just keep praying. Raise your voice, somebody. We just want to open up the heavens. We just want to open up the portals. The Bible says, can a nation be born in a day? I believe today it is that day where we are gathering that South Africa is not going to be the same again. Open up and declare that as we gather, we are gathering as a nation. Kumbreta zebro koto lobo shikiande kimbroso tolobo sakaya tanaba rebo shoko tolobo sikiande kumbre zebeke tenebe sikiande reba shoko tolobo sa riban tolobo shoko tolobo riban tenebe sikiande lebo sa kete lebo shoko tolobo sa man tele bruzebe katanaba zebro koto lobo sikiande kepre seke tenebe sikiande man tolobo shoko tolobo we pray the flow of the Holy Ghost we pray the flow of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Man tolo bro soko tolo bo. Man tele prese ki ande le bosa. Ki tele bro soko tolo bosa. Reban tolo bro soke tele bo. My God, we thank you. You are rending the heavens open. Man tele bro soka ta. Zebe ka tolo bro soke tele bo. Man tele prese ki tele bo. Kota la prizo ko tolo bo. Repe tolo bo sa. Jete ka tolo bro se. Kuyan tolo bro soko tolo bo. Man tele bro soko tolo bo. Man taya ka tala bose. Here the book of Ezra says, when Israel gathered as one nation, Lord, you begin to move and you begin to transform. Father, we just want to pray, my God, for every prophetic utterance that is going to be released, my God, from this from this altar. Katale bro sekete, ribro soko tolo bose. Not the will of man, but the will of God. Kumbreze, zabro ko tolo bose kiyande. Man tele bro soko tolo bose. My God, we thank you. We are in a season where you are prophetically aligning South Africa to your call. Where you are prophetically aligning. My God, kept down to the call of God. Where you are prophetically aligning us into the realm and into the time zone. In the name of Jesus, for such a time as this, we have been called. For such a time as this, we arise. King of glory, we thank you. We stand boldly as lions. In the name of Jesus, we will stand and declare the prophetic utterances. We will stand and declare the voice of God. We will stand and declare that that said the Lord. This is the day the Lord will release my God a voice from this altar. This is the day that we release. Katola brosa kata zeprotianto robri katola basi kiyande reposha katola basi kiyande alignments my God. This is the season where Lord you are. My God, we just want to pray. I release my God of prophetic oracles. I release my God of alignment. 
because behold, I'm going to do a new thing, says the Lord. Now it shall spring forth and you shall know it. You shall observe it. You will be able to recognize it because I, the Lord, have made my people, hallelujah, free in this day, free in this hour, says the Lord of hosts. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Come on, let's give a sound. Let's lift up a sound in the atmosphere. If you are Holy Ghost saint, lift up a sound in this holy place. In the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord of my soul. Come on, let's give God praise this afternoon. Come on, church, you can do much better than that. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord. You are ready to lift up his name this afternoon. Come on, are you ready to praise the Lord with us? Because he's risen, amen.
together with one purpose, to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify the name of Jesus. That's a powerful name, the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord this afternoon. That's a powerful name, the name of Jesus. And as we make declaration this afternoon, how many of you know that principalities and powers has to bow their knee to the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. Something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. Demons tremble when you call on the name of Jesus. That's not just any name. That's a powerful name. That's a mighty name. The matchless name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. So I want us this afternoon, in this moment, forget about the person standing next to you. Forget about what you're going to do this week. Right now, in this moment, focus on Him. Worship Him. Lift Him up. We didn't come to see a man. We came to lift up the name of Jesus. So as we're in this atmosphere of worship, How many of you know that right now he's working? Right now he's moving. There's something happening in the atmosphere as the church of God begin to raise their voice, begin to lift up a sound, begin to glorify the name of Jesus. Take a moment as you worship him, as you glorify the name of Jesus.
moment to pause, just stand still. It is said that the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, that the church grew daily. And the reason they grew daily was because every day they would stand still and they would just think about the cross. They would think about the work of the cross. They would think about what that meant for them. They would think about on the second day that Jesus went into Hades and reclaimed the keys of eternal life. And then they would think about the third day. Tell your neighbor the third day. Tell your neighbor it's the third day. And they would think upon this fact that every other religion claims that their God was born. But no one can lay claim to the fact that their God died but rose again. This is your God. This is your God and His name is Jesus. And that, 
my family is how the church grew because they had this deep conviction about the death and the resurrection of our God. And so I wonder if we can pause for a moment, just for a moment, just in this place. Who is worthy, worthy, worthy? Worthy is His name. It was my cross you bore, so I could live in the freedom you died for. Mm. And now my life is yours, and I will say of your goodness for. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy Sing, worthy is your name. Shame is gone. I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Oh, your grace goes on and on. Your grace goes on and on. And I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name.
Jesus, we thank you. Begin to thank you wherever you are. Open up your mouth and thank him. We release a sound, a sound of victory, a sound of alignment, a sound of restoration as we begin to fall and God begins to restore in this moment, in this time, for such a time as this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit to be here to rest upon us today. Are you happy to be in this place? If that is you, won't you just give the Lord a praise? Won't you just open up your mouth and begin to shout with a sound of victory? Come on! Praise the Lord. Come on, before you take your seats, when you want to give someone a high five and say war and restore. Come on, say to someone war and restore. Hallelujah. Praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him. Give someone a high five and say war and restore. Ah, He's a good God. Amen. Thank you so much, team. Wow. What a presence of the Lord in this place. He's such an awesome God. I just think of the scripture that says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, that our weapons of warfare is not carnal. I just sense as we started to worship, there's such, there's such a release of the weapons of God in this place. So I think you should give yourself another big God bless you. That you are here. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think our first guest of honor, who's our first guest of honor? Can you welcome our first guest? First, welcome the Lord in this house, in this place. We welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. That to every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Won't you just give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords the biggest and the greatest welcome in this place. That's why we are here. That's why we came. It's for the King of Glory. Hallelujah. That's for him. Oh, what an expectation in this place this afternoon. I believe that things are not going to be the same. Cape Town is not going to be the same. South Africa is not going to be the same. The mother city is not going to be the same. There's a shaking. There's a birthing. There's a moving. There's a realignment happening in the spiritual realm. Can I get an amen? Can I get an agreement? Well, something is about to break. Something's about to move. Something's about to turn. As you begin to open up your mouth, there's a prophetic sound being released. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let me also just take a moment to welcome you all. I'm thinking especially of those that came from outside of Cape Town. Came all the way. I want to ask you to stand. You came, so let's all see in Afrikaans, I come from Fairaf. You come from far off. Don't you want to stand? Wow. Come and look at all these people. Can we, Ketonians, give them a warm welcome? Come on, can we say to them, we are so blessed. We are so glad you came. You're going to have a great time with us. Wow. We thank the Lord. And then obviously, I also want to welcome Tata Mohueng Mohueng. I think he might still be on his way. But he and Ma, Anna, we want to give them a big God bless you. And also Apostle Linda, Chabodo, uh, can we put our hands together for them that's coming to minister? I believe we're going to have a glorious time. This is a prophetic gathering. This is a prophetic gathering. It's a prophetic gathering on a prophetic day at a prophetic location. And you are at the right place. I know some of you are still recovering from your big office and hot cross buns. But we are excited to have you here. I'm going to ask the fivefold ministry. I don't know about you, but I have such an appreciation for the fivefold ministry. Those in the front line. Can I ask all those in the fivefold ministry, can you take a moment just to stand? We want to take a moment to welcome those. If you're in the fivefold ministry, don't you want to jump to your feet? I'm going to ask the congregation here today that we're going to take 30 seconds and we're going to thank the Lord for every fivefold ministry gift. 
and we're going to celebrate. Can we put our hands together and can we say, Lord, thank you for the men and women of God that's on the forefront, on the front line of the battlefield. Lord, we pray for them. We prophesy over them. We declare, Lord, the blood of Jesus is their portion. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you so much. We also want to welcome uh, Mr. John Matatele. Ujesu Uyagutanda. Umkulukulu Uyagutanda. Malibongwe Kamalenkos. Ah, I surprised some of you. Let's give God a praise for that. We must greet in all the languages. And when you don't know what to say, you speak in tongues. Amen. We also have the privilege to have Dr. Barry Isaacs with us. A man of God that's a real leader in the city. Don't you understand, sir? We want to, I know him, he's going to say no, but can we put our hands together and thank God for the gift that he is to the body of Christ? And even all the dignitaries that traveled with Tata Mohueng and also the Tryon family that's come all the way from Durban. Can we put our hands together for them? Can we just thank God? And you know, I don't want to, I've left this for last because when something like this happens, God speaks and He moves. He does the work. But the thing with God, He speaks to a man and He speaks to a woman. And somebody said yes. And because of their yes, we are here. So I'm going to ask my wife just to acknowledge them. Yes, we want to welcome our dad and our mom. Won't you just stand as we acknowledge you in this moment? Pastor Josie, Pastor Desiree. You know, the Bible says that the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and they understood the seasons. And so this afternoon, this evening, we want to acknowledge and salute you for being a pioneer in this city. Not only in the city, but in the nation and nations. From local to global, Christ Nation International, to be a forerunner for us so that we can flow. But the Bible says that it's the anointing that flows from the top down. And we are so blessed and we are so honored to be connected to you. And I'm honored to have proximity to you. And this this whole event was birthed because of... that cannot celebrate its own. I wish I had some people in this place that say we can celebrate our very own because God wants us. God wants us to celebrate our own. And the Bible says that when Jesus came to his own hometown, that Jesus, the Son of God, not would not, could not perform any miracles because they said it's the carpenter's son. It is amazing how we can honor those whom we don't know, but we struggle to honor those who's come from us. So can we, that's why I said the fivefold ministry here, can we honor them? Can we give God praise for them? Can we thank God for them? Can we celebrate the Lord? Can we say, Lord, we will walk in honor. We will move in honor because there is power when there is honor. Whenever you find honor, you find miracles. I'll read for you just one portion of scripture from the book of Philippians. And we're getting ready to give. I've just got two minutes. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3. 
You know what the Apostle Paul says? I thank God every time I think of you. He says, for your partnership. You see, today we are not here to take a building. We are not here to take a community. But we are here by the grace of God to take a city and to prophesy over a nation. And remember, a man and a woman of God cannot do this alone. They need a people to partner with them. You know, we came here today and we didn't pay to come in. These days you pay for everything. You pay for concerts, you pay for this, you pay for that. But because of the heart of the visionaries, it was let us get the people there. And everything you see here, we thank God for those that have sowed seeds. And we give God praise for that. Amen. And so what we are going to do now, before we pray, is we're going to get an offering together. And we're going to sow a seed. And the way we sow seeds is not by obligation. We don't do offering by manipulation. We do it by the Holy Spirit speaking to every individual. And the Spirit of God will minister to you to say, give. So I want to ask the ushers, I don't know if you have of these envelopes. Because I've got a few of them that I've already filled and put my seed in there. Don't you want to get a seed? You know, always look after your wife. You will have a happy life when you have a happy wife. Amen. I want to ask you, I think the, the card machines is going to be, do we have some card machines? For those, I'm thinking of those that said, I would have really loved to give. But I forgot, I didn't bring any cash with. The Lord thought of them. And the Lord made a way through you. So I want us to stand as we give us this. So if you can distribute, if you, if you need an envelope, if you have an envelope, sign. But if we can stand to our feet. And for those that would love to give by a card machine, we even put a danger tape up there. Because we know when you swipe your card, it's dangerous. Amen. Don't you understand? The bank details is right here. This is a bank account you need to memorize. When you wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, we say, Karaba Sandraba Sandraba, 623-576-33702, Karaba Sandraba Sandraba. Don't you want to stand? Come on, we're going to give. For us, giving is as the Spirit leads you. This is what it's about. Worship is free. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul says, every time I think of you Philippians, we can only take the city, he said to the church in Philippi, because of your partnership. He says, I thank God for you. And then he goes on to say, and the work which he has started in you is faithful to complete it. Amen. The seed will produce a harvest. Let's pray together as you get your seed ready. Father, we thank you that as we come, Lord, to sow a seed, your word says that we must give freely because you love a cheerful giver. Not a tearful giver, a cheerful giver. And so today we are glad. On Resurrection Sunday. If it was not for Jesus, where would we have been? And so today we can give because of you. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your goodness and your provision. In Jesus' name and everybody says, Amen. The ushers will send down the buckets and you can give there. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. And let's give him a praise. Amen.
just to give you a little bit of a history. Um, we gathered here in 2018. It was the first time we decided to come to the Castle of Good Hope, one of the oldest buildings in our country. And we came as instruction, the Lord has instructed my husband to say, come to the Castle of Good Hope, go to the gates of the city and go and reverse a curse that was started here more than 400 years ago. Go and take possession Go and take possession and reverse that which was started because I don't think by then any part of the body of Christ has done that really, that prophetic act. And we came out here and we did that. Um, little did I know that that was, I think that was done on the 2nd of April, 2018. And on the 30th of March, Veronica West, a prophet from Ireland, had released her first prophetic word over South Africa, the nation of South Africa. That was two days before we came here. And what she saw was she had never been to the city of Cape Town, but she had a dream where she was standing on the top of Table Mountain and she saw the war that was raging over the city, over the gateway cities of our nation. And that was the start of it for us. And I remember as I just look at what God has been doing throughout our nation. And do you know, I'm sure so many of you agree and feel the momentum of the spirit of what God is doing in our nation right now. We're going to enter a season. We've entered a season of fulfillment of every prophetic prophecy that has been spoken over our nation. And Cape Town, Cape Town is critical critical and strategic in what God wants to do across the nation. We have to give birth to what God wants to give birth to in our nation. And then in 2000 and I think it was 2019 Ellen that we, is it 19? 18 as well. Where your organization gathered the First Nation people here as well. And I know we were part of that and wow what a day it was. And our Chief Justice, Tata Mokheng, was with us on that occasion just to unify and bring unity and peace amongst the groupings. And you know how God is using ordinary people across this nation, let me tell you. Using ordinary people to accomplish the prophetic promise over our nation. And then in 2019, was it 2019 when we started the electoral, started the process? that Princess Chantal, is she here this afternoon? Come on, just stand and let's just honor her this morning, afternoon. And many of you don't know how strategic this place is and what, that this will be the first elections where independents have the opportunity to be part of the elections. And did you know that this 
It was so simple. At the time, God had spoken to a man, Advocate Alan Nelson. And one day, Chantal came to me and she said to me, um, Pastor Desra, Alan has phoned. Can we go through to Wellington? God had spoken to him how he needs to, to reverse and how we need to change and amend the electoral act. And I said, let's go. I had the flu. I said, let's go. And we got to Alan and Alan sat there and he says, this is what we're going to do. We're going to approach the High Court of South Africa and we're going to change the electoral act. And I'm saying to you right now, we sat with Alan, it was just the three of us there, and we drew up the papers to apply to the High Court. And before God had clearly spoken to him, he said, Alan, this is what I want you to do. He said, if you get this right, you're going to be going to win a revolution without one bullet. We, we typed out the papers and from there, he said, you've got to get it in in a week's time. And in the next week, he prepared the papers and we found ourselves in this room at the back here. Remember, Alan, with all those attorneys preparing the papers to go to the high court. We went to the high court a week later. They threw it out, I think, right there. He just went in a minute and Judge Desai threw out the electoral papers. He said, what do you expect us to cancel the elections? Are you crazy? Get going. And Alan said he didn't give up. Alan said, we're going to the Constitutional Court with this. And we went up to the Constitutional Court. And there was setbacks. And it was all a part of God's plan, as Alan said. Setbacks as he stood there and presented Princess Chantal's case before about 10 or 20 judges in the Constitutional Court. Do you know that we, that God is busy working, that in the middle of lockdown, that the, what was it, that they, they the, 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 let's say the verdict came through in the middle of lockdown. What was, you remember the date, Alan? When we, I think it was June in 2020, when they ruled in favor that the electoral act will be amended. And last year, the 17th of April, our president signed the amendment to change the electoral act of this nation. Do you know that our God, our God is working to accomplish his purposes in this land? And so today I want to say this is where we are what God is doing and some of us don't know what's happening behind the scenes but God is using each and every one and using specific people across the nation to bring change in this nation and right now I want to also just a few months ago my husband said the Lord had spoken that we need to again go to the castle on resurrection Sunday which is today and today is such a prophetic moment that as we saw, it was Christ Nation churches coming together. It was first New Hope Church, but then Christ Nation churches came together to come and host this event here today. And as Chief Justice had heard from the Lord that he needs to be part of what God is doing right now. So we give God praise for what we are about to see unfold as part of the prophetic destiny. I believe that every Psalm 24 says, lift up ye heads, O ye gates. Lift up ye everlasting doors and let the King of glory come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God strong and mighty in the battle. And I believe, church, this afternoon, the next two months is going to be critical and crucial for us as a nation. we got to pick up the momentum in prayer. we got to pick up the momentum in prayer. we got to set the watchman in place like never before. That night and day, we got to come before the Lord for our nation, South Africa. And I believe as we come together in unity, as we come together in repentance, as we come together in prayer, that we will see a divine dismantling, a divine dismantling of every principality and demonic structure and everything that has kept our nation in bondage for so many years. I spoke, had about a half an hour with Veronica West, the prophet from Ireland, about two weeks ago. And Veronica said, Desiree, tell the people to look up. Tell the people to look up that they should not become discouraged and look left or right, but tell them to look up because just like South Africa right now, the stench of death is smelling all around the nation. But I have not forgotten, just like Lazarus was in, was dead for four days. And Lazarus 
house was, was starting to smell already. The stench was getting. He said in four days, he said just like that, I will resurrect the nation of South Africa. But he says, don't look left or right. Don't depend upon the arm of flesh. Look up, look up and call on God this moment. And I believe that as our nation comes together in prayer, in unity, and this is just one prophetic act. I know there are many movements in South Africa this moment contending and warring and restoring over the prophetic destiny of this nation. South Africa will be known as a nation of great revival. We will see this nation free and fulfill its prophetic destiny. May the Lord bless you this afternoon as we just I hand over to my husband. Come on, somebody say, Jesus is our resurrection. Come on, say it louder. Jesus is our resurrection. Resurrection is not a day. Resurrection is not an event. Resurrection is Jesus. Come on. Resurrection is Jesus. It is so significant that we gather on this day, celebrating what took place 2,000 years ago, where today we sense that we are part of this resurrection plan. Because within us is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And if all of us can realize that, this country will never be the same. Although it took us more than 30 years. But since we realize that the same power that raised Christ 2,000 years ago is within us, is within you, is within you. And if we can just realize that, we are able to say the same power can transform this nation. This morning, and I won't be taking any further time, I want to drop something in your spirit. This morning I said to the church in my sermon title, Come, I'll take you into the tomb. Come, I'll take you into the tomb. Come, come, come. I'll show you inside the tomb. The first thing that I said was that the stone was not rolled away for Jesus to come out. He could have come out even if the stone was still there. The stone was rolled away for us to go in. And I said, come, come, come. Let's go in. John 20. Lindsay, bring up the scripture and I'll just drop this in your spirit. John 20, Mary, Mary came into the, into the John 20 verse 11. Mary stood weeping outside. Mary arrived at the tomb, broken and sobbing. She stooped to peer inside. Come, come, come with me. Let's look inside. Let's look inside. She peered inside the tomb. And through her tears, look at this. Look what she saw. She saw how many angels? How many angels? Look what she said. She saw two angels in dazzling white robes sitting where Jesus' body had been laid. One at the where? And one at the? And when I look at that picture, Pastor Barry, my mind went into an Old Testament revelation. It looked like this picture. Look at this. Jesus became the covenant revelation to us. And what Mary Magdalene saw that day when she peeped inside the tomb. And I want you to become what the Word of God says. We must experience resurrection within us so when you look inside the tomb this is what the Jews saw for many years but on the day when Jesus rose once again this is what was revealed inside of that box it is called the Ark of the Covenant and inside of there were the three items the tablets that represents the Word of God the jar of manna that represents eternal provision and the rod of Aaron 
that was disconnected from the source, but it came back to life, which speaks of resurrection. And if you can just realize that we're in a season where we thought we were dead, we thought we were finished, but somehow or another, after 30 years, there's a coming together of the body of Christ. There's a coming together of movements. There's a coming together of people of God that something has to happen because we know Him that rose, the power that raised Christ from the dead is still within us. And if you believe that, stand to your feet. Give the Lord some praise. If you believe that, open your mouth and give honor unto God. This is a nation that is a resurrected nation. My wife said that Veronica West prophesied that we are like that Lazarus moment where we smell and yes, there is a stench all across South Africa. There is chaos all across South Africa. But God is raising up voices in the earth that will say, come and tie the Lazarus. South Africa, you are coming back to life. The whole continent depends on us. The rest of the world depends on us. This is the time where we have been resurrected. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is in us. Come on, if you believe that, say amen. Our next speaker, you may be seated, is Apostle John Muthlute. He's all the way from Senegal in, in, um, in Free State, Free Start. And he's about to share 10 minutes with us. Won't you put your hands together as he comes from time to arise. Hallelujah. Wow. This is beautiful. Amen. To be in the presence of the Lord. Um, this is time within a time. This is a Kairos moment. And we really praise God for, for this gathering. And thank you so much, Apostle jo Jose and Mama. You are the father and the mother in the nation. And we are so blessed to have voices and fathers. And I just want to acknowledge um, all your presence, the corporate anointing, the body of Christ coming together. This is what the world is waiting for. Exactly this picture. This is what South Africa is waiting for. And I believe we are living in unprecedented time. There is a shifting that is happening in our nation. Somebody mentioned the sons of Ezekiah, people who understood time. They had a discernment to understand what time is it. Hallelujah. What time is it? When people say it's time for war, but there are people that need to understand what time is it. It's time for revival. Not only having a knowledge of what time is it, but also the Bible says they had a wisdom how to respond to that time. Romans chapter 8 verse 19, it says, For the whole creation waits in eager expectation. Not for the next wise man, but is waiting for the manifestation of the sons. And this is what God is doing at this moment. The Bible says, For the whole creation has been groaning has been going through the labor pains as a, as a woman is about to give birth. So we understand that whatever is happening in our nation at this time, the brokenness, the decay that we see, that is not the sign that our nation has been destroyed. That is the cry for the nation for something unique to emerge. And they are waiting for us. They are waiting on the body of Christ. This is the time for the church to take its rightful place in this nation. And we can see what God is doing all over. There are flames of revival popping up all over. 
God is connecting people. People who did not even know each other. But they know each other in the spirit. They speak the same language. They are standing on the same platform in the spirit. They are seeing with the Father what God is seeing. Not only for South Africa, but for Africa. This is about the continent, people. This is about the continent. The nation of Africa is waiting for the nation of South Africa to come into alignment with the divine purpose and plan of God. And today we are here in the furthest tip of, of Africa, Cape Town. Right at the old, the first parliament, I'm told. What a significant moment. That there was a voice, a prophetic voice that came out and say, Revival will start at the furthest tip of Africa. It will be a fire that will burn through Africa. And Africa will come into a, full, into a fulfillment of her purpose. And Africa will begin to rise. And we are seeing Africa rising in the time that we're living in. We see God is positioning kingdom sons and kingdom men. Don't be surprised when you begin to see righteous leaders beginning to come into a strategic places in this nation. Because God is turning it around. The nation that used to be covered with darkness, the nation that received the word and was evangelized by the Western and the Europeans. In the last day, says the Lord, the end time revival and end time harvest of the world will be led by Africa. The same people that were looking down upon, the Lord is saying, Africa, I'm going to restore you in this time. You will take your place in the nation. That is why it is so important for us to unite as a body of Christ. It will never happen if we walk alone. We need to find each other. It is in that unity, the Bible says, he commands his blessing. There is something about a corporate anointing. And the devil knows the moment and the day the church come together, the table is going to flip around. The enemy is going to lose. And that is why the enemy is fighting the unity of the body of Christ. But we stand here today. We speak it into this nation and we say, God, the bones are coming together. The bones are coming together. I hear the rattling of the bones different gifts in the body of Christ beginning to connect to one another and beginning to form a formidable uh, army that will stand before the Lord and say, God, we are ready for the good fight. I was asked to pray for the president and to pray for our leaders, to pray for our nation. And as I'm sitting here, the Lord gave me a scripture that I just quickly want to read before we can pray for our nation. How many of you know that South Africa needs a prayer? As the Chief Justice is coming through, we just want to welcome him on behalf of Apostle Jose. We give God glory and honor for this man. Hallelujah. just quickly want to read this for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you mind to stand upon your feet as we read this together? I'm reading from Isaiah 22. verse 15 and I feel this is the word that the Lord is sending to our leaders because even as we pray for our leaders and we trust God for them 
the Bible says we must speak truth to power and we must call them to repentance and the scripture that came into my spirit is Isaiah 22 verse 15 where the Lord is addressing the spirit of Shebna Shebna is a man that was entrusted with the treasures in the palace of the king but the Bible says that Shepna was not faithful in his calling. This is what the Lord says, Almighty says, Go and say to this, the steward, to Shepna, the palace administrator, What are you doing here? Who gave you a permission to cut out and grave a grave for yourself here? You need your grave on the height and chiseling your resting place in the rock. Beware, the Lord is about to take firm hold of you and haul you away, you mighty man. He will roll you up tightly like a ball and throw you into the large country. There you will die and, they, and there the chariots you were so proud will become a disgrace to your master's house. I will dispose you from your office and you will be ousted from my position. Listen to this. In that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the keys to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut and what he shut no one can open I will drive him like a I will drive him like a peg into a firm place he will become a seat of honor for the house of his father all the glory of his family will hang on him its offspring and offshoots all its leather vessels from the balls to all the jars in that day declares the Lord almighty the pack driven into the firm place will give away. It will be shared off, will fall, and the load hanging on it will be cut down. The Lord has spoken. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to the spirit of Shepna in this nation in the name of Jesus. The spirit that has stolen, the spirit that has neglected, the spirit that has broken, the spirit that has deceived, the spirit of pride. Father, we speak to it in the name of Jesus. And we fire it this afternoon in Jesus' name. We say out of South Africa. Out the spirit of Shepna. Out in the name of Jesus. As we stand here, Lord, as a corporate body, we call for the spirit of Eliakim, the faithful servants in our leaders, in our administrators, everywhere in every sphere of influence lord we call them to rise up in this time we call that spirit into their hearts we say god raise up men and women that will be passionate lord to be steward true steward of the nation we call them lord from everywhere in the name of jesus we pray that you will establish that spirit in their hearts Men that will not care about their own interest, but that will be fathers. As you said in the scripture, that Eliakim will be a father in Jerusalem. We release that upon our nation. Even as we bring our leader and our president before you, God, we pray that that spirit will be in his heart. Even in this critical time in the history of our country, we pray that you will speak to him, Lord. 
that he will come to repent. He will come to seek for your face. He will humble himself before you can remove him, Lord. That he can say, Lord, I surrender. Use me in this time to take this nation into a path that you have planned for it. Lord, we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's all say amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you. Before Pastor Dr. Barry comes up to do the final prayer, and we will then introduce Tata Mocheng, we want to just uh, show honor to Councillor Mari Sukas. We honor you today. The Lord bless you. Thank you for being here. And then my late spiritual father's daughter, biological daughter, Michelle. Pastor Michelle, we're happy to have you with us in Cape Town. Some new things that the Lord is birthing in your heart. Such an honor to have you as well. Can we welcome a real father in our city, Dr. Barry Isaacs, as he comes to deliver our final prayer and speech. You may come, Dr. Barry. Greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That sounds like Africa. I've been asked to pray, especially for the president. And the question I asked, I asked my wife when I left home. I said, Apostle Josie asked me to pray for the president. So... I wasn't sure if I was to pray for the president present or for the president to come. Will you stand and join with me? Our gracious God and Father, Today we stand under the canopy of your blue heaven. We hallow the ground we stand upon. Every seed, word spoken, that disgraced the kingdom of God in this place, we cancel that now in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we are a people looking for a better day. Lord, our heart cry is for revival and we understand that revival is not our creation, but it is yours. And we want to pray this afternoon for a revival that will be sent from the throne room of God, unctioned by the Holy Ghost. Nothing less, nothing less in Jesus name Father there was a day in February 2018 when Cyril Ramaphosa was inducted as the president in South Africa and Lord God the people rejoiced because it was as if there was a little bit of light coming through that we yearn for but we are also standing here today recognizing that what a man sows, a man will reap. There was a day, there was an hour when he committed his life to you and he served you. But the things of the world have become so attractive that grabbed his attention. And Lord brought him in a journey that has not been good for this nation. 
And now, Father, I want to lift him up before you. I want to pray that the Spirit of God would come upon him. I pray that there would be a conviction of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord God, that he will search his own heart. Lord, that he will repent and turn back to you. His creator, his redeemer, his deliverer. Father, we pray for him. We commit him to you. We are not the judges, Lord. You are ultimately the judge. And so we want to lift him up before you and we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Bring about a revival in his own heart. I pray, Lord, even as those who walked on the road to Damascus, Lord God, when you rose from the dead, their hearts were strangely burning within them as you spoke to them. And so I pray, loving Father, that even right now, right here today as we pray, that his heart will strangely burn as you speak to him, that he will fall on his knees and he will cry out to you. And so God, we commit him to you. Every politician, we pray for them. We pray for the righteous men and women in government today. We pray for a double portion of anointing upon them. Lord, that they will rise up and stand up as pillars of righteousness in this nation. And God, as we move forward to the election that is facing us, we pray, God, let your will be done in Jesus' name. We know even right now, there are those who are sowing seeds of discord. We are there are those who are running to the Songomas and the witches, shedding blood, killing animals, sacrificing them unto their gods. But we know that the sacrifice that was paid on Calvary, the blood that was shed on Calvary, Oh, hallelujah, 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 which is the finished work of heaven. And Lord God, they put you into the tomb. But even as we heard our Apostle Joseph speak about it, there came a day and an hour when the stone was rolled away and you came forth in power. And so we pray that that power that raised Jesus from the tomb will raise Cyril Ramaphosa right now in the name of Jesus to a place of repentance, to a place of restoration in Jesus' name. And then, Father God, we commit the future of South Africa now into your hands. Into your hands, Lord God. Into your hands, Father. We commit South Africa to you. Raise up the righteous men and women. Give us the men and women that will take us to the other side for the glory of God and for the establishment of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor. That was such a powerful prayer. Maybe you can just grab two people around you and continue to pray just for two minutes. Continue to pray. Grab three people's hands around you and continue to pray. We know that we're in an environment of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. For we know on this resurrection day that we raise up an altar. We raise up an altar to bring a difference within our nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you honor, we give you praise. We give you glory for the glory of God is about to reveal upon this nation. The glory of God is about to shine upon this nation. And as your people stand, not in as different races, not as different tribes, 
or as different denominations, but we stand before you as one nation, one nation before God, crying out, crying out, can a nation be born in one day? Yes, yes, because of the resurrected power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead is now within us, is now in this place. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. We are live streaming this event. And there are currently 12 gate cities in the country tuning in and then there are currently 12 gate nations on the continent of Africa tuning in if you wish to tune in and send the signal to somebody you can go to the YouTube channel of Christ Nation International or you can go to the Facebook page of New Hope Church SA what we're getting ready to release and have being released today is something that I believe will not just bless your heart, though it will bless our heart, but it will set us on our journey for prayer towards the election. Today we are 60 days away from the election date and we have within our midst a man of God that holds much prophecy over his life. It was prophesied that he will become the chief justice of this nation. When he was interviewed and he shared, I'm supposed to be because of the prophecy. Those that interviewed made fun of him. We stand at the turn of another prophecy. Many other prophecies spoke directly into his life and since I've followed the prophetic word upon his life since 2018, even before he retired as the Chief Justice of this nation and subsequently been inaugurated as the father of this nation. Since Madiba, we have not had a father of this nation. We had politicians. We had presidents. But we did not have a father of this nation. And you will agree with me. What we need is a voice of a father and what you're about to hear is the voice of a father come on won't you stand to your feet as we welcome Tata Mugheng Mugheng as he comes afford to be gathered here to listen to the voice of a mere mortal. It is you, our Father, our Savior, King of glory, the one who reigns in heaven and over the nations of the earth that we gathered here to hear from. I surrender my heart, my lips, and my mind unto your Father and ask that since you the same yesterday, today, and forever, you do to me what you did to Jeremiah. Stretch forth your hand, Father God, and touch my lips. Put your own words inside of my mouth, Father, so that I do not speak out of the instruction of the flesh or carnality, so that I do not speak out of the anointing or the inspiration of any demon, but only the Spirit of the living God. I ask in line of Luke 21, Father, that, Lord, you give me the mouth and the wisdom that none, none of your enemies, Father, who are in turn our enemies, would be able to resist or gainsay. Let your spirit, let your glory come down. Visit us like never before, Father, and let each and every one of us, even those who might have come here to spy, 
even if even those who might have come here to sneer at this gathering father let them have their Damascus moment I pray king of glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen hallelujah may we be seated saints well maybe I should start with a bit of the end hallelujah Maybe I should start with a bit of the end. On the 29th of this month, we went to a village which is about 45 minutes drive out of Umtata. Umtata, I'm sorry, not Umtata, Umtata. The name of the village is Elujizwe. It, is, it was a divine setup that I'll touch on much later, but the essence of the introduction is the following. We went there because we were invited to celebrate 70 years of the, one of the greatest revivals that ever hit this country that happened there. The revival that resulted in people confronted by a flooded river on their way back from evangelizing as they praised and worshipped the almighty God, the river opened and it was dry, and at least one of those who were present is still alive to tell the story. And that revival has been flowing in that village so much so that not so long ago as the people were, were praising and worshiping the Lord and praying, the roof of the rendezvous in which even the pioneers of revival in those years, 1953 and after, used to pray in, the roof got lifted up, leaving a space between the wall and itself and came down to settle down as if nothing has happened. I could say more, but I just wanted to introduce something about our visit to that village, an ordinary village where ordinary people like you and I who are not pursuing recognition, fame, power, or money but I pursue in the heartbeat of God. Continue to pray. And what happened? We prayed. We shared the message. I was privileged to share the message that the Lord had put in my heart. I had been praying all this long, but it was not until the morning of that day that he gave me the message. And the fire of God came down. The the unfaked outpouring of the Spirit of God came down. There was a profound manifestation, visitation upon people. Apostle Linda was busy rendering a hymn. She, she was crying and it was almost as if she wouldn't continue anymore. I believe with all of my heart that it was not a coincidence that we went there. We went there to connect with the fire, with the mighty move of God, so that even as I, by the special grace of God, minister here, I minister as driven by the same Holy Spirit, the same fire that was manifestly present in that village. We find ourselves in a season where mere mortals in the United States of America here in our country, which the Lord says, believers who have searched and checked must refer to as a Zania meaning, God hears, God is listening. In Botswana and wherever else where elections are being held, have churned out promises to their electorate. Nations are being told what mere mortals are going to do in order to ensure that all humanity, or even at times sections of the population, would experience a better tomorrow, a just, peaceful, and prosperous nation. Strange enough, this is what they have been doing all these years, but there is very little to show as evidence of delivery on the promises that they have made. And they should not be condemned. They are mere mortals like you and I. That is what is required. 
and what is required because the problem is fundamentally spiritual is the intervention by the almighty God. The one who knows the end from the beginning. And the question is, as everybody is crisscrossing this country, as others are crisscrossing, there are different nations where elections are due to be held during the course of this year. Promising people whatever they have to offer and to deliver through their intellect and the strength of the flesh. What is the almighty God saying? Are we saying that the Lord is silent on the future of this great nation? As everybody is running helter-skelter, looking for how to be different from the other, what is the almighty God saying, the one that we pray unto? Is he not the same yesterday, today, and forever? Is he not a God of purpose? Does he not have a plan for this nation? What have we been fasting and praying for? Is it a dead God that we are serving? Or is he the living God who never changes? Did he speak to the prophets of old? Did he speak to David and others and yet he cannot speak to us? Is he smaller than the constitution and our laws? Or is he indeed the one? who can bring about change in the shortest possible time, allow me to highlight part of what the Lord said. Unfortunately, I didn't revise this long thing, so I'll try and, I'll, I'll, I'll try and, and summarize. Because the more you read, the more drowsy people get, even if it's cold. The Lord said through Kim Clement of blessed memory, and I quote, I'm going to visit South Africa, I call it Azania, for what I will do in this continent is far greater than what I've ever done in the history of the earth. And through Amaka Abe, the Lord said, the rings you see are the healing, saving, and miracle power that will start from the southern tip of Africa. This will be the mighty outpouring of my spirit, and many will come running into my kingdom Africa will be saved. Many from all over the world will come to experience the power of God. You will see things you've never seen before. I pause there to say, by the way, that is what he did at Eli Jizwe. People from the United Kingdom, Australia, America, and other parts of the world converged. They would from time to time be visiting that small village and that small rondavel to experience what the Lord has done. And because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's going to do it only in a greater measure. And the second point is, Dr. Peter Morgan was used of the Lord to say, and I quote, then I heard God saying, Africa, the fruit basket of the nations, its resources and its wealth, both, min both mineral and agricultural, shall become the envy of many nations. But Africa, unlike the nations of previous generations, shall not use their wealth for the domination and exploitation of others, but rather to feed and suckle the poor, the weak and disadvantaged people of the world. For so they were regarded in the times gone by. Many shall look upon her and shall indeed call her the motherland. For inasmuch as she has peoples of the nations of the world by the diaspora of Africans that have been spread in many nations across the earth, so shall she bless her own, and in doing so, she shall bless the nations of the earth. The Lord used Naomi Shenabega to tell us that, and I quote, there will be multiplication of food, increase of crops on farms. God is going to place his hand on your land, meaning this land. The earth shall reveal what has been hidden, and the Lord said, I have hidden treasures of gold and minerals. I saw oil, I saw precious stones that shall be revealed to you in this economic season. Azania, the Lord said, he's been withholding the treasures because there was coming a time when he was going to take Azania out of her debt. And these resources would balance the debt. 
It will cancel the debt and Azania will stand on her own. The Lord said he is raising Josephs who have an economic mind to help Azania in this season. Lord gave me Psalm 113 to give to you. No one can be compared to God and thrown on high. He stoops down to look upon the sky and the earth. He promotes the poor, picking them up from the dead. And this is what I saw. And he rescues the need from the garbage dump. He turns paupers into princes and seats them on their royal throne of honor. God's grace provides for the barren one's joyful home with children so that even childless couples find a family. God is about to heal. She says, South Africa, I say, Azania. And through Dr. Jonathan David, the Lord said that he will stabilize the Azanian currency. It will not go into free fall. The nation's economy is going to be steadier and steadier. And the Spirit of God used Pastor Amaka Abe to reveal this to us. I'm about to bless my people abundantly more than what they can think. Be faithful with what I give and I will open for you a window of heaven. I hasten to add that through um, Jane Hammond. She said this is the, great, the land of great wealth. This is the land of great wealth generation. This is not a poor land. Those are the promises of the Lord. And through now, Mission Abega, the Holy Spirit reminded us of the modern day scribes and Pharisees and said more about his plan in these terms. And I quote, many of you have contended as Daniel, praying day and night for your land, reminding me of my promises. There is a great heavenly battle over your nation. Darkness is attempting to invade through powers of deception. But my truth shall sound a loud awakening trumpeting call and many shall repent and travail over their wicked ways and my grace shall arrest many into my kingdom plan even as I encountered Saul on the road to Damascus. Azania, you are in the baptism of fire. The spiritual war Azania is currently facing is about a much greater purpose she holds for the continental awakening. The enemy has attempted to capture you and use you as a gate for his agenda in Africa. Azania, you hold the key to the transform transformation that is coming. Many in whom you have put your trust have denied me and walk away from their godly calling and their intended positions. I pause there to say, when you hear a man or a woman of God or a child of God, without even praying, angrily opposing the prophetic word of God, not doing what we have been commanded to do in the book of Thessalonians, not testing the spirits, not testing the prophecy, you must know this is the category in which they fall. You can't oppose a good promise of the almighty God. The best you can do is to say, Lord, is this from you? Or is it uh, from some of these fake prophets? You can't just react instinctively unless you are one of those modern day scribes and Pharisees who hold the Bible but use it for other purposes other than those intended by the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know where I ended. Some have been captured, I'm quoting, and are being used as agents of deception and do not know it. Their hearts have grown cold, yet their gifts are without repentance. This is bringing confusion and deception in the hearts of many, causing some to fall away because their roots are not in me. And the fourth point is, Heavenly Father, stop the rain. Let this meeting proceed uninterrupted in the name of Jesus. You've given us power. You've given us authority. Rain stop now in the name of Jesus. Amen. In 2001 already, the Lord said through Dr. Peter Morgan concerning the establishment of his kingdom or government in Africa, through the instrumentality of his remnant, I quote, 
There is already birthed an unstoppable church, and we shall see it. For it is catching like wildfire all over the mighty continent, state after state after state. Almost spontaneously and almost simultaneously, he says, where embers have already been lit and are now waiting the wind fan for the Holy Spirit, and they shall pass forth in a mighty blaze across the nations. The altar of the church shall be surpassed and outlast by the throne of God's authority within the nation. For God shall claim state house after state house after state house when governments of nations shall become the governments of our God. And it shall be declared unequivocally that Christ in this continent is the king of all kings and lord of all lords. And great conferences shall look small compared to great conferences of the nations that shall celebrate their God. For though we invite kings, governors into our house to celebrate with us, to hear the word in the altar, in this new move, says God, I shall cause kings, governors, presidents, and prime ministers to summon the people and their conferences shall invite the church to honor his God. That is God's manifesto. And I pause here to say, he said he's going to do it his own way. Which constitution and which law did he operate in terms of to create the heavens, the earth, the oceans and all things in it within a period of six, six days? Which law restrained him from doing his will? Not in six weeks time, not in six months time. But in six days. So why is it that we think that the God who created man in one day can be so constrained by the constitutions, the laws, and the Babylonian system of man as to be incapable of working out a miracle for his glory, for his name's sake? Did he not say that the just shall live by faith? Where is our faith? Shall he find faith when he comes back? Why have we allowed unbelievers to tell us that our God is so small that his power expires the same way as the, pa the power of those who give unbelievers power? Why do we think? That he could open the earth to swallow the enemies of his will and seal it up as if nothing has happened. And yet, today, that power exists no more. Why do we think that he could open the Red Sea so that his own could have a majestic and safe passage across the Red Sea without any, any whale or any shock intimidating or eating them up? And causing only his enemies to be swallowed up by the ocean. And today, we have allowed the high priests and the priests of the ecumenical movement, the one world religion, the mixed multitude, to tell us that our God has, has power has expired. He has power no more. It is their father their father of the other kingdom that is powerful. Because he has been harassing us all this long out of ignorance, we must continue to believe that we are subject to his authority. Ah, doubt and unbelief and cowardice are the reason for the downfall of the children of God. Point number five. To lead his kingdom or his government in Azania, God has raised a man after his own heart, a Moses and a David, a president who will turn the, the people away from Baal and his altar and ongoing blood sacrifices and restore them to him. Restore the sacrifice upon his own altar. That David, that president, would take God's people from captivity to the land of promise and abundance. Reverse all ungodly constitutional and other legal provisions. Enact laws that will restore justice, peace, prosperity, and freedom to worship the God of Trinity to the land. 
Saints, God did not consult us about this because he knew we were never going to believe him anyway. He decided on his own that this is what he's going to do. The same way he decided on his own who of us will be conceived as a result of which man and which woman come in together. We were not consulted, neither were our parents consulted about the kind of child that will emerge and about the destiny of that child. We only get to understand better, according to Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, that he is that God who knows us before we were even conceived. And while we are still in our mother's wombs, he predetermines and ordained, uh, ordains us, he sanctifies us to be these vessels which, according to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, will advance his kingdom. Why do we undermine the almighty God so much? Why are we like the doubting children of Israel who soon after being delivered from Egypt, they come, they see that the Egyptians are in hot pursuit. They say, you see, Moses, we wanted to die there. But why, Moses, why did you bring us here? Now look at what he said. We actually love the cucumber there. We want to die in Egypt. Why are we like that? Why are we not using this instrument called the Holy Bible to transform our lives for real, particularly because unlike Moses and the prophets of old, the Holy Spirit does not visit us. He lives in us. He guides us on a daily basis, if only we would allow him to. That government will be replicated in the rest of the continent and the rest of the world as seen in the previous paragraph. Through Veronica's words, the Lord said, Watch, for the government of heaven is now being established in the nations of the earth. My seven kings are rising up in greater power, authority, and kingdom revelation in the nations. Those are the promises of God. And he goes on to say, The revival birthing, the governance and economic blueprint that will guide African leaders to fulfill Africa and the rest of the world's divine prophetic destiny will be received and shared with other nations by Azania. And number seven, he says, well, as for the unification of the church, the Lord says, and I quote, he says this through Kim Clement in 2008 already, I'm going to join Methodists, Anglicans, and Presbyterians and charismatics and evangelical evangelicals, and I'm going to bind them together under the bond of my love. These discriminatory tendencies, oh, they are the mainline church. They are of the church of the law. The Lord has got no regard for that. And through Amaka Abe, the Holy Spirit said, it is time for the spirit full to come together as one. Don't look to Kala, for this move is not prejudiced. Change your mind and seek me with all your hearts. It is time to leave your petty arguments and seek my face. And point number eight, the Lord instructed the remnant through Jennifer Leclerc to pray without ceasing until you see my will come to pass. For many revivals will break out in Africa, but Azania is the tipping point to awakening a continent. It's time for the intercessors to tap into the prophetic words and prayers spoken over Azania. For many, many days gone by, it's time to tap into the First Timothy 1.18 charge to wage war with the prophetic words spoken over the nation. It is time to get aggressive in the spirit who will pray. What does that mean? Don't just pray anyhow in the manner that you, you feel comfortable with, in the way that excites you. God has released the word. And just as he released his words in Jeremiah 29 regarding how long it would take him to deliver his people out of Babylon, and Daniel did not just say, oh, he has spoken, let him do it. But instead, in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel got hold of this word, that prophetic word, and repented for the sins of the nation, including himself, and prayed it into manifestation. He said, Lord, this is what you said. 
do it. David did the same. According to 2 Samuel chapter 7, he received the word through, uh, through Nathan. And what did he do? According to verse 25, all the way down to, to 29 in particular of that chapter, he prayed it into manifestation. Our responsibility is to follow the instructions of the Lord to the letter. To do what he says we must do. But on the contrary, what do the children of God do? Because we have been socialized into Babylon. We say, all right, it's election time. Nothing happens except through elections. So I must form a political party. And I must look for money. Who is the rich one in the nation? And then the elections come. And then you get one seat. Or seven seats at best. And shame is on you. Who told you to do that? What is the meaning of Proverbs chapter 3? Verses 5 to 6. Lean not on your own understanding. Who told you to do it? I'm not saying that God can't tell you to do it. But it will show. If what you are doing is what the Lord said you must do. Oh, the elections come and you just vote anyhow. Okay, who do I like? Okay, they have the name Christian. Who told you to vote for them? If the laws are passed and they support them, that say that children must be taught sexual intercourse at the age of 12, and that they must abort if they get pregnant without the knowledge and the consent of the parents, that falls squarely on your head. And don't be surprised when nothing good happens to you and your children because you are an instrument behind whatever is happening that offends God. You supported it. So the Lord encouraged us again through Naomi Schoenberg. He said we are to come boldly to the throne of grace and contend and wage war with every prophetic word spoken over ourselves and our nation without doubting the authority within us. All authority has been given to us and is within us. And further, through Micah Jennings, the Lord said, like Elijah, you will increase in prevailing prayer and travailing prayer. The ability to run the race with superhuman strength, miraculous provision, and the tenacity to break down evil kingdoms. You will stake the words of Isaiah 47 verse 5 with the sword of the spirit in your nation. I quote, Babylon, sit now in darkness and silence. Never again will you be known as the queen of, of kingdoms. So we dare not allow Babylon to guide us. She goes on to say, lose words that reflect the nature of words spoken in Genesis. Words of establishment, words of timing, words of planting, words of order, words of indwelling. And through Veronica West, the Lord said to the remnant, fear not, for there is a battle raging over your birthright and destiny in this hour. Know that I have set you as a precious jewel in my crown that shall not be plucked out, nor shall it be removed. But I say to you, look for the writing is on the, on the wall. For a nation weighed in the balance and found wanting, I say to you, as you cry out for mercy, and as you look to the hills from where your help comes, surely I shall deliver you from the lion's den and from the devouring spirit. That seeks to destroy you. Be of good courage. For you, Azania, shall see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. And, con and God concluded this reassurance through Cindy Jacobs as follows. I, the Lord, say, make room for the harvest. For my eyes have gone to and fro looking for a people I could trust. I have found a remnant there. This is the womb of the Spirit, says the Lord. You are birthing a new thing. Do not be intimidated by the enemy, for I say to you, do not, you do not know how intimidating you are to his forces. So rise up, says God, arise and shine, for my light has come to Africa. And number nine, again through the mouth of Veronica West, 
the Lord encouraged us in these words. I quote, for surely I tell you, my courts have been filled with the sound of the cries of my Esther's going forth across the land. Let my people go. Let my people go. Now watch as my spirit of retribution and restoration begins to move and shift the spiritual atmosphere over the nation. Listen, for there is a new sound rising from the land. It is the sound of a mighty deliverance. It is the sound of mighty vindication and mighty victory over the enemies of my people. Watch, for the walls are coming down and seven times I shall restore what has been lost and stolen. And seven times I shall revive what has been dead and decayed. And seven times I shall replant and rebuild what has been uprooted and destroyed, says God. What does this mean? The promise that the Lord is making to you and I is, I know there is so much that has been stolen to you, from you. There is so much that you have lost as an individual and as a family, as a community, as a city, as a nation, as a continent, even as the church of God. But because you've been crying out unto me, I'm going to restore at least seven times what has been stolen from you and what you have lost. But it doesn't end there. He says, even that marriage, that divorce that has happened and you don't understand how, that promise that was broken, that business enterprise that collapsed in a way that doesn't make sense, that house that you have lost, everything that is dead in your life, I will revive. Even if it is rotten like Lazarus, I will revive it at least sevenfold. He doesn't end there. He says, I know that there has been much destruction of what you have built and much uprooting of what you have planted. But by reason of my faithfulness, having listened to your prayer, based on Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, I will. I will rebuild what has been destroyed. I will replant what was uprooted at least seven times. So which manifestos are you looking for? Are you a child of God? Do you believe him? Is he a liar? Point number 10. The world used the Lord, I'm sorry, the Lord used Apostle Kure to command us to demolish ancient and divisive foundations like that of Paul Kruger. He went on to instruct us to instruct us to thank him for all that has happened in the past, good or bad. For he allowed it, and now is the time for us to unite across the racial divide and speak with one organized Azanian voice. The Lord took it a step further through Veronica West in these terms, and I quote, Last night I had a very powerful dream concerning the nation of Azania, where I was standing at the very top of Table Mountain in Cape Town, Azania. Now, as I stood high above the city of Cape Town in the dream, suddenly a mighty warring angel of the Lord appeared to me, and as I looked up, the angel lifted up his sword, and suddenly I saw a fierce battle taking place in the heavens over the nation. And I saw four very large and very powerful demonic angelic beings or principalities standing over the nation of Azania. Suddenly, I saw ten cities, which included Cape Town City, rise up from the ground, and I heard these words, Watch, for the demonic powers and principalities of the dragon spirit have occupied the ground in these gateway cities. But watch, for suddenly there will come a divine dismantling of the demonic strongholds in these gateway cities, for a divine displacement has begun. A divine displacement has begun. A divine displacement has begun in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Watch, for behold, I'm doing a new thing in the midst of my people in this land. Do you see it? Point number 11. Reminding us of Isaiah 66, verses 7 to 8, the Lord said through Emmanuel Kure, 
Mpomo Sweu, Haruna Goro, Cindy Jacobs, Veronica West, and Naomi Schoenberger, that he is birthing a new God-fearing, united, and highly prosperous nation, and that this will happen suddenly. But how can this be? Let's listen carefully. But how can this be? Some believers who suffer from doubt and unbelief like Zechariah. Remember Zechariah in Luke chapter 1? He's been praying for a child. When the Lord said the child is coming, he said, but how? Some believers who suffer from doubt and unbelief like Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and the Lord or the noble on whose arm the king of Israel leaned, according to 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 2, would ask. We have the constitution and electoral laws here. It is part, it is a party political system we have. I mean, get real. You must be mad to think that this God of yours, even Christians say so, you must be mad to think that this God of yours can just usher in a government without an electoral process. Really? Have you read the Bible? Was Esther qualified to be the queen? Wasn't she in bondage? Wasn't she in captivity? Was a Jewish woman supposed, and an orphan for that matter, supposed to be married by a king who had rulership over literally 127 uh, countries which they refer to as nations? How did she become the queen? How do you explain that orchestration? I mean, the whole thing is crazy. Vashti, knowing that she's queen at the mercy of the king, gets instructed by the king to come and display her beauty. What does she say? She says, nonsense. Who are you? I'm not coming. The Lord stirred her up. He allowed the spirit of rebellion to settle in so that she could be deposed from her queenship and his own daughter Esther could come in. I mean, Mordecai was just a majingilan, eh? A gate man. He was just a gatekeeper. Where did he receive the necessary training to be prime minister? From where? And who was training him? How do you train somebody who is in captivity in your land to rule over you? How? The whole thing is nonsensical, isn't it? It is the same kind of madness that they say I'm suffering from for saying that the almighty God is well able to do whatever he says he will do. But prayer and fasting, praying the will of God into manifestation, resulted in a great suddenly. Suddenly. On the day he was supposed to be killed, he was honored. And later in that evening, the one who was supposed to kill him was hung in the same gallows. Is that not what Esther chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 says? The same gallows. The same gallows. So when the word of the Lord says, the pits that they dig for me, let them swallow them. It's not just a hyping up exercise. It shall truly come to pass. Joseph was he not in prison because of attempted rape, at least according to the allegations? Was his father there to train him into anything? Did he even have a spiritual father from prison? A slave, a property, becomes... Was he even worthy to be in the presence of King Pharaoh and his uh, council? Why was he listened to? Why did not they not start with his alleged crime? Oh, did you really try to rape that woman? So you, you, how can we even listen to you? God blinded them, wiped it all out of their minds. They forgot that he was a prisoner. Divine wisdom under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit came in. And he spoke with great clarity. The Spirit of God came upon him. And the king himself says, ah, 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 ah. The Holy Spirit is in charge here. Did he not say so in effect? Did he not say there was a spirit? He said, this kind of wisdom. He says, this blueprint can only be implemented by you. God has a blueprint for his church, for this nation, 
for the continent and for the nations of the earth. I don't know about you, but I have confidence in this God. Some, again, I'm not trying to justify myself. The Lord justifies me. But I felt inspired to share the following. Uh, even people who have never been to law school now want to educate me about law. I mean, I say it with all sense of humility. I'm fairly well trained in the area of the law. I practice the law as an advocate. I practice the law as the judge of the high court and of the labor appeal court. I practice the law as the judge president of the high court. I practice the law, constitutional uh, law, as the judge of the constitutional court. And I practice law as the, as the highest authority among the judges and magistrates of this country. And at one time, I was privileged to lead all the judges, all the judicial officers in the continent. For a season, I was privileged to chair the executive bureau of the World Conference of Constitutional Jurisdictions. So somehow you think that uh, I don't understand constitutional law and the law. May God have mercy on you. In case we have forgotten, Apostle Paul was a lawyer of note. But he chose to put aside his knowledge of the law and surrender his knowledge to the Almighty God. No wonder he did such great exploits. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Maybe let me go to the finally. Finally, the Lord said through Kim Clement, and I will turn this nation towards Israel once again. And will breathe upon this nation and this giant shall be awakened. And through Peter, Dr. Peter Morgan, the Lord said, and he says, I quote, Watch, watch Israel, for this great continent of once oppressed people now turn in gratitude to their God with the people of Israel who themselves have been oppressed, have been ignored, and have been destroyed, but for the remnant. And you shall find common cause, and you shall be bonded together to the messianic purpose of the living God in these end times. And God says, the nations of Africa shall represent the Gentiles of the world before their God. And as the Gentile nations before God, they shall be joined with Israel, shall like no other nation declare themselves as brothers. God says, the largest cluster of nations that shall worship before Zion are taken from the land of this continent. Then shall be heard the eschatological cry from out of the throne room of God. Now is the dwelling of God with men. What am I saying? I'm not saying anything. The Lord has spoken through Prophet Kim Clement and through Dr. Dr. Peter Morgan and many others. In fact, he spoke very strongly through Jennifer Leclerc on the 13th of January, 2024, that we have poked our finger in the apple of his eye. Go and ask him if he said so. I'm not saying it. He said it. But I'm not going to be politically correct. I'm going to be biblically correct. Now I understand. These are showers of blessings, saints. Eh? I, I thought the devil was trying to disrupt this thing. Now I know it was, um, it was the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Now, hey, my thing is frozen here. So, the Almighty God caused us to participate in the celebration of 70 years of revival at Elijizwin, which coincided with the end of the 70 days of prayer and fasting that he instructed us to embark upon. He did so, he revealed it to me, because that 70 years was marked the end of an era and the beginning of another. 
the era that has now been ushered in or that is now in the process of being ushered in is that of the manifestation of his glory, his immeasurable wisdom and power. It is time for the children of God to realize that the wisdom of man has failed them. And when all else fails, it becomes time to do, is it Jeremiah 6 verse 16? Whatever it is, to go and look for the old ways. What used to work? What is it that at least took us out of Egypt into the wilderness that we have been in for the past 30 years as a democratic nation? Was it not prayer by all the children of God? Was it not holding on to his promises? We have allowed ourselves to be tossed around by the religious and political spirit. We have allowed ourselves to be controlled by Babylon for far too long. Isn't it about time that we turn to and study Revelation chapter 18, verses 9 to 21, about the reality that Babylon has fallen never to rise again? Isn't it about time that we even look at the prophetic words regarding the destiny of the leaders of this nation who have had the opportunity to do the will of God but have not? Should we not read the prophecy by Rebecca Erlang and others regarding the will of God? I think we would do well to study from the NIV Ezekiel chapter 12 verses 21 to 28. There shall be no delay. The will of God will be fulfilled. I seem to be forgetting the last word, but I think I'm done. I'm glad that I've been so glad this. Let me just check. Here's the last point. So Jezebel. The head of Jezebel has been cut off. The head of the Leviathan has been cut off. The altars of Baal have been destroyed. Witchcraft, sorcery, necromancy, magic, and occultism has been destroyed. The Lord spoke to us through his daughter Naomi Shonabaga. That even those that operate within the deception of, the, of Freemasonry shall be delivered. All those who think that they are doing a good thing when it, in fact it is not aligned to the will of God will be delivered. And this city is the spearhead of the greatest revival in the history of the earth. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let revival break out in a greater measure. Release your fire, Father God. Release your glory. Release your spirit, my God. Demolish anything that still stands that represents the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let there be no delay no more. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, release your angels, Father. Activate them to ensure that, Lord, your plan, the destiny of this nation and continent and the nations of the earth is not sabotaged. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. One more time, give it up, give it up, and we thank God. I'm going to pray while you move out of the rain. All pastors and dignitaries, you can find your way to my right-hand side. There's some uh, fellowship that we're going to have. Father, we thank you for that which has been declared today. Father, we give you honor today for your word that remains and still is today. Father, we thank you that even through this moment of rain, light rain, we could even be consistent, oh, Father. Bless your people. Guide your people. Be with us on our way as we carry on to give you glory and as we give you 
you praise in Jesus' mighty name. And as you go, say amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Sutton, do you mind to 